Hi, and welcome to this tutorial to build your painting skills. In this session, we will use a strong color contrast by using complementary colors and create texture by layering diluted paint and through varied brush strokes. This task should take you about one hour to complete. I found this picture online and cropped it square. We will use it as a reference for our painting. We will work about 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters square, and I will simply mark out 20 centimeters now in my sketchbook. I will use these brushes. I have a round brush, a filbert, which has curved bristles, and a flat brush, which I tend to use most often. On our palette, we will need white, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, cadmium red, ultramarine blue, and black. Note we do not need large amounts as the painting is small. I also have a cup of water to rinse my brush and a rag to wipe, but a paper towel is also fine. The first thing we are going to do is tone our paper. Place some water on your palette and add the yellow ochre. Cover your entire paper. This does not have to be done neatly. Let it dry or use a blow dryer. Next we will sketch out the object. I have switched to the round brush and used some slightly diluted burnt sienna. Looking at the reference photo, we will break the composition down into parts. I first place these two ticks for the horizontal area and extend them across. I then create a vertical line down the center. I create this square to indicate where we will place the lock. I place a little tick to indicate the thickness of the locking part and curve the bottom. I then add the slight diagonals for the sides. To create the top, I add the curves, keeping in mind it is fairly symmetrical. I then add the area at the top. Next I'll refine the lock attachment area. I create this rectangular shape to help me deconstruct and construct the form. I create the two curves for the lock. I'll even place some of the screws for reference. Next I'll take some diluted yellow with some ochre and create some broad random brush strokes. I'll also add some burnt sienna and continue doing this. Feel free to play with different values to add to this. This process will help create the weathered look of the lock. Using some pure burnt sienna, we will now start forming sections, starting with the dark shadow areas. Follow along as I do.
Note when I get to the screw areas, I am only adding shadow to one side to create the appearance of a casted shadow. Use diluted burnt sienna to create slight tonal variations in the horizontal bar area. Take some blue and white to mix a pale blue. Start by applying it to the top area. Do this in a rough sketchy manner. We want some of the underpainting to show through. Do the same in the bottom area. Use the blue to create the edge work of the lock. Add to the bar area and feel free to apply a slight second coat. However, this may not be necessary if you wish to create a more weathered, rusty look. I now take the ultramarine blue with a small touch of black. I'll use this for the casted shadow of the lock. Create the shadow as I do. I also dilute some of this blue as a glaze. You see I added to the shadowed areas. I also use a dry brush technique to help create some textures on the lock. Dry brush means not a lot of paint applied to your brush. If you happen to apply too much, simply try wiping it off with your finger. I'm now going to apply a second coat to the large shadow. I'm going to use the burnt sienna to create some middle tones in the highlight areas of the lock. Add them as I do. I'm going to take some white to add the highlights to the left areas. 
This also helps bring out the darker tones. I'm just going to darken the burnt sienna with some black to add a few dark values in the darkest areas. I think the casted shadow needs to be a little darker, so I'm going to add another coat. If we reflect on our painting, what might we do better next time? I'm generally pleased with it. I like the weathered look, and I think the blue really complements the warmer tones used. Often beginners will jump into the black, and I'm glad we didn't. I wonder if I should have applied less blue to perhaps show more of the underpainting through to create a stronger weathered look. I hope this has helped you develop some skills for an artwork. Be sure to check out some of the other videos to continue building your skills. Painting takes time and practice. Don't give up. Lastly, just a shout out to Mark Daniel Nelson as this activity was adapted from his book.